Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Eternal Card Game with Alex at Geeks Gaming. Thank you for coming by. Today, I have the penultimate list of puzzles here. We have Void and then Mentor. Mentor. So today I'm doing the Void. I've only managed to get one done so far because I'm been quite busy. So there's some more that I need to work through today. So let's start off with the Void. Let's see if I remember how to do this. I did this uh, about three days ago. Use the Void to help you win this turn. Boom. Alright. So the enemy has seven life and I have one. Uh, they have a Scorpion Wasp. I have a West Wind Herald. Um, what else do I have? I have to win this turn, right? So... This one is the North Wind Herald, and it's free if you have played two spells this turn. Dark Return, a unit, uh, draw a unit from your void, it gets plus one plus one. And South Wind Herald, which helps to create the 1010 Avatar of the Winds, and that's how you're gonna win. Then there's the Jotun Hurler and the East Wind Herald. So you can start off by getting the Jotun straight out of your uh, void because it has Fate, Create and Draw a Snowball. And as easy as that, you can get rid of your blocker. And you can play this out if you like. The storm is upon you. And yep, and then you can play this one out as well. The great avatar beckons. Because it's not a summon effect, it's at the end of your turn, right? Then you attack with this. Then you can draw out the Dark Return. And do the East Wind Herald. So, it says here, at the end of your turn, if you have all four Wind Heralds, sacrifice them to play um, the 10-10 Avatar of the Wind. So you have the South, the North, the West, and the East. What is the Herald? It's a 10-10 Flying in Aegis. Uh, so when you summon, deal 5 damage, right? There we go. To each enemy unit with flying and the enemy player. When the Avatar of Wind hits the enemy player, play a spell from your void. So, despite this being very awesome, it's actually really hard to play. Because of the... you need at least 5. Then maybe you can get this for 0. Another 3, 8, and then 9, 10. A gift from the east. So you need at least... 10, uh, 10 available power to play it off in one turn, and probably more than that, because you'd need to play two, two spells. So you, unless you're playing three spells, then this one would also be another, say, two, right? So at least 12 power. But to kill everything with flying, uh, and then also do, or to do all five damage to everything with flying and to the enemy player might be exactly what you need to win. There we go. Congratulations, you have beat the Void in bronze. Okay, the Void Silver. I found this to be easier than bronze, but that's the ups and downs of your own personal knowledge and just depending on however they decided to arrange the puzzles. The enemy has 11 life, I have seven. And they're in the middle of an attack, right? So they have a Jawbone Hatchet. 1-1. Uh, they have a Doom Phantom, which is a blocker. 4-3 and a 3-2, which has Summon, Exhaust, an enemy unit. Okay? So you only have one thing to play here, and that's the Shadowlands Feaster. Now sometimes you might be inclined to just block the biggest unit, because then you'll only take 3 damage. However... I'd actually be able to make use of this summon exhaust uh, an enemy unit because I have sleeping draft and dark return in my hand. Okay. So let's block this instead and we'll, we'll still be within a safe distance of staying alive here. Okay. And this one says play a unit from your void that dies this turn exhausted. Now this seems like a, a really useful card. Uh, however, I've tried playing it in my decks, and it just doesn't seem to work out 
uh, as well as I want. So that means you probably need to build a deck specific to this card with summon effects and things like that. Because if you play a regular unit back, it might not be that useful. But if you play this one back, you get the summon effect the second time. You can summon this blocker, which would be able to absorb all of this damage. Now, what they've hidden in the void, which is something you can check at the beginning of each puzzle, and you can always check the enemy's void as well. What's hidden in the void is a Ruin Crawler Yeti. And you can actually find this card to be very useful in the recent card sets because when it comes into play, you can kill an enemy attachment. Now, not only that, you're getting a kill an enemy attachment, you're getting a unit on the board which could be defensive, but it also has an attacking potential as well. So when Ruin Crawler hits the enemy player, it gets plus one. So this can actually get to five attack power with only three hits. That's good in a red deck or a fire deck because there are some cards, some uh, units and so on that uh, make things with five attack power to be to have extra effects. Uh, so you can actually make this work very well. And even if it means you're killing a sling of the chi or a beacon of the reach or a grodov's burden and those kind of deadly relics, a martyr's chains, this is a good thing to have in your red deck. There are of course lots of other ways to deal with attachments in red as well, but uh, this happens to be, at the moment, my current favorite. So imagine this is, instead of a jawbone hatchet, you have like a uh, beacon of the reach here and, he ha and he's just able to play random units every turn. Or more, more than one. All right, so we're gonna draw that thing out. Now we're going to kill the hatchet, because otherwise we can only attack for 8, 9, 10, 11. But he has 11 plus 1, so we need to get rid of that plus 1. This thing is not useful, it's not, you can't get past the defenders. You can actually afford to play it, actually. It doesn't change your game at all. But even if this was in the void and it had plus 1, there's nothing you can do with it because you can't attack past exhausted defenders when you're attacking with your player. But you have enough attack power from these guys, and there we go. It's done. So congratulations, you have completed the Void in Silver. Okay, time to go a gold digging. In Void. Fight through the Aegis and win this turn. One wasn't too bad, it took me a couple tries to figure out, and uh, it's quite interesting. Because it seems a seemingly random ensemble of cards here, and you're able to do 24 in one turn. So the enemy has 24 life, you have one, uh, you have Fire Sigil, or Forgotten Fine, play two uh, power cards from your Void Depleted, Sensari Brigand, Gilded Glaive, within power. Stone Scar Excavator, Protect, give a unit for player Aegis, Vodokan Staff, so this one comes back to your hand if you have in power, and you also have this in your void. Now, the way you play this out doesn't really play out in the way that you would normally play things, and it makes it very interesting. Um, and you do actually use every single card, including those, in the void. So. Gonna start off with your attacker. Of course, you must win the turn with this. It has, it deals double damage. You don't actually get the skill double damage on this, but you don't need it, all right? And you can attach the Gilded Glaive to this. The important thing is, do not play this out. That's the initial temptation, and that's how I lost the first one. Do not play this out. And that's because you want this. Stone Scar Excavator, once per turn, you pay four and discard a power card to deal one damage to the enemy player for each power card in your void. Right, so um, there's one here, and if you discard our card, there'll be two, right? The problem is, as you can see, the enemy player has an Aegis. Now, is there any way you can think of getting rid of the enemy's Aegis? It took me a moment to realize this, but Protect can give a unit or player Aegis. So if you put an Aegis on top of that, does it make it double strong or equally strong? Actually, no. Aegis protects um, the enemy from one 
spell from me. So I could actually give an enemy player Aegis. So this actually is a way to get rid of their Aegis. You wouldn't normally do this, but if you wanted to get rid of the Aegis in a hurry. Boom, it's gone. And then this thing comes into play and you're going to pay for its effect, which is throw away a power card. And it does two damage. It's a very small amount of damage, but it does the trick. They now you have two power cards. So you can get those power cards back anyway. Here they come. And this pumps up to eight because it's got the empower. And then you attach the Vodokan Staff, which is 11. And what's 11 times two? It's lethal. All right, so congratulations. You have completed the Void in Gold. Okay, time for Diamond the Void. And in true Diamond fashion, for most puzzles, Diamond is, seems to be the most difficult, most challenging of the puzzles. It's not always the case. Sometimes it's Masters, sometimes it's Silver. But in this case, so far, this is definitely the most difficult that I've done because there are so many options. So let's get down to Brass Tacks. And uh, the enemy has 25. You have one health. Your health doesn't matter. You have three units on the board, including the Umbran Reaper. And to deal five damage to the enemy player, and you gain five. So this is key to winning. In your Void, you have Harry of the Liberator, Shimmer Pack, Lava Blood Goliath, and the Slime Spitter Slug. This is the one from the Void that you need. These other ones are too expensive to get the effect that you need. You need this one. Uh, summon each unit with flying gets negative one, negative one for each of your units. And uh, when an enemy unit dies, you gain one heart and the slime spitter slug gains plus one, plus one. So you need to get this out. So the first thing you need to do before anything else is to attack. Just attack, because later you're going to start killing your unit here. First thing you need to do is to take the grasping at shadows to get this out. Hmm, you'll do. Other ways of using Grasping at Shadows are too expensive. So just like that, you give the enemy 5 damage. Now what's important is, you've given a negative value to the Umbran Reaper. The other thing is, by using creature effects like the Slug here, or Bar of the Fate Touched, by bringing units from uh, the Void into play, what happens is, it, you won't be able to select the Umbran Reaper. You get kind of ripped off. You can't throw the negative three into play. You can't force play it. I don't know why it's like that. Uh, okay, so let me just give an example. So if I do Vara the Fake Touch. Umbran Reaper is in my void, right? You can see it, it's right there. But it won't allow me to play it. And then in the same way, if you do Grasping at Shadows, you won't be able to select uh, Umbran Reaper because it has a negative value. However, you can select the negative value creature or unit by using uh, spells from your hand. I'm not sure it's why it's like that, but that's something that's critical, especially in this puzzle. But it might also be critical to you when you're um, on the battlefield, so to speak. Thought I'd better illustrate it rather than just uh, tell you about it. So getting things out of your void is limited and also you can bring the umbran reaper back once with this even like so if you let's say i killed it with temper it goes to the void it's still a 5-1 it doesn't have the negatives you can bring it back with vara but then this then it then it has um void bound so then it stays in the void after that but the main problem with using vara is actually the fact that she costs eight yeah so we're going to go ahead and use the slug mm, deal. to kill the Umbran Reaper. We're going to use Dark Return. Remember, we can't use the creature, the unit-based effects. It's expensive, but you do get a shift of 10 life, right? Five from them to you. And you can do it again.
He's still negative, so he won't stay on the board, which is exactly what you want. And you might be thinking here, oh no, the enemy is at three, what do I do now? Well, you have uh, Ticking Grenadines, so you can just kill the Ticking Grenadine. And then you bomb the enemy for three. So there we go, you got it. Congratulations, you have cre uh, created, you have completed Diamond in the Void. Okay, time for Master in the Void, and this one is significantly more difficult than Diamond. I'm actually happy to say that because they're in the right order, except for Bronze, which is harder than Silver. So, same text, to stock Void should be proved useful this turn. It took me about 35, 40 minutes, I don't know, I'm just guessing, to figure this one out. So I'm just going to give you the solution then, rather than the runaround, because there are tons and tons of options here. You have stuff in your void. You got this one. Don't get tempted by that. You have this and there's a combo here. Don't get tempted by that. And this is too expensive. OK, uh, they have a lot of lifesteal units on the board. This and this. Then you have two deadly units. Then you have the Thunderhoof Warrior, uh, a Flying Whispering Wind. So even though you have this in play, this is very strange. I'm not sure how you got it in play because there's no blue here. There's no blue here. So you can't use this unit twice. It's just a one shot. And then you have the Statuary Maiden. So when enemy units, uh, when an enemy unit dies, you transform it into a 2-2 Cudgel. You see that at the beginning of the puzzle series. And uh, enemy units can do more revenge, but that's fine because it doesn't affect this. So let's let's figure out exactly what we need to do first. So you go, let's have a look what's in your hand. You don't use this, you don't use this. Smuggler stash, we're gonna use that first. Excavate, predator's instinct, combust, and execute, which you don't use. Okay, so smuggler stash. You need these units. Sand Warrior and Lumen Shepherd, believe it or not. The seemingly least lesser useful ones, right? Twin barrel and spiked helm. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to kill the enemy with this, but not completely with this. You actually need a torch. So how do you get the torch? You need to use the Whispering Wind. When the Whispering Wind attacks, you may discard a card to draw a higher cost card from your deck. The only way, first of all, you need to get the torch into your deck and you can use that. You can get it there with Excavate. Put that on top. As you can see, you only have two zero cost cards here. And so you're going to get rid of the Sand Warrior. And if you attack with that, you will lose your turn for attacking. So you have to use Killer. You cannot attack the things with lifesteal. You can only attack the things with not lifesteal, basically. And you're going to, you must discard this one. And then you get your torch because you've got nothing else in there. All right, you get a cudgel for that, and you put the cudgel on this. Arm yourself. Arm yourself. Okay. Then you're going to combust this unit here. I only tried it with this, but I don't know if it makes a difference with that one. I'm not sure. It might have the same effect. Then you're going to arm this one again. Arm yourself. Then you're going to twin barrel this. Then you're going to put a spike helm on him. So now he can do 16 damage, right? So the enemy wants to kill you in the next turn, so you can attack with this, and they only want to block with this. They won't block with this because they want to kill you on the next turn. And then you just torch them, and then you live happily ever after. There we go, that is Master in the Void, and that was quite tricky. What's the interactions with the void? So it just depends on the card that you're using to get things out of the void. There's creatures that bring uh, units out of the void and they can be put into play, into your hand or into your deck. And the same goes for any cards like Sleeping Draft, for example, brings the unit back into play, but it had to die that turn and it has to be played at a fast speed. Um, when I'm building decks, I happen to use Dark Return and Triumphant Return a lot just because they're the cheapest. 
they have the least amount of restrictions to use and they do give a little bit of a pump. But there are other situations when you would want to use something else like the smuggler stash. Because then you can get really good weapons and units back in the same turn. There, uh, so if you take things out of your void and put them into your hand, it's considered a draw. So you saw there the Lumen Shepherd. The Fate ability went off again because you drew the card again. It doesn't matter that you drew it from your deck, it just matters that you drew it. But if you played the Lumen Shepherd, the Sleeping Draft, straight into play, you wouldn't get the Fate effect. So that's important things to remember too. Um, going into your hand from either the Void or the deck is considered a draw. Going from the battlefield to your hand is not considered a draw, it's just considered returning it to your hand. Or, yeah, returning it to your hand. And um, putting it into play has a different uh, ability. Of course, it will kick off the summons and allow you to do the ultimates and spell crafts again. So that's an important thing to consider. And of course, there are some other cards that can draw relics from the void as well, which... Uh, this one is more about units in the void, but there are also relics that can be discarded and brought out of the void. There's also spells that can be brought out from the void as well. And as you saw in, I think, diamond or gold, I think maybe gold, you can draw power cards out of your void as well. And usually when you draw a power card out of your void, it's cheaper to play or it has some doubling effect. It's not like you just draw it out and then you can play it again normally. It usually has an extra benefit. So besides that, oh, drawing things from your void is one way to say, is probably the most important way to save yourself from a mill deck, from a discard deck. So if somebody's about to exhaust your entire hand, there are cards like the Lumen Reclaimer and a lot more of them now where you can put cards from your void into your deck. So you don't die from drawing into like drawing zero. So if you have zero cards and you draw, you die, right? You don't want to have that. Quite often, if you can counter, like in the mid to late game, if you can counter um, milling and you can put cards back into your deck, it totally wrecks a discard deck because it has no other function. Its units are there to, you know, its units are there to defend them for enough time to make you lose all of your cards or the units themselves make you discard cards. If you've stopped that effect, all you need is better units to kill them with or some other effect. So that's how the Void plays into discard as well. And there's also, there's, there's so many other things to consider as well, but uh, I'll let you figure those out by yourselves. And uh, that's all I have for the Void. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do give a subscribe or follow and like if you liked it and uh as always give a comment it's nice to see your comments and we're getting to the end of puzzles here pretty excited next uh you know after this series of the void then we have uh let's check here mentor and mentor is quite an old skill so where do we go after that should we should we make our own puzzles i don't know let me know down in the comments below has anyone ever tried that before let me know as well if you know about that. And um, yeah, besides that, you guys have yourselves a good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And thanks for coming by from Alex Agix Gaming. Bye-bye.